where we started a new program a couple years ago, um, which is a collaboration between the law school and the philosophy department that is, um, we call it the a law and ethics program. And as part of the uh, starting up of that program, we decided the University of Michigan is one of the permanent sites for the Tanner Lectures, and we decided we would have a Tanner Lecture in association with um, the inauguration of the Law and Ethics program. So we would pick somebody who would come and talk about law and ethics. And so my first thought um, when I was told I'd have the opportunity to help select the Tanner Lecture was to see if Justice Ginsburg would be willing to come and talk and happily she was. I think it's wonderful that Justice Ginsburg is coming to the Michigan Law School. Um, I think it's going to be great for our students, it's great for our community. Um, you know, we have such a great intellectual community here and, and, and it's going to be great to engage with her. I love that so many of her former clerks are on this faculty. I think we have um, more former Ginsburg law clerks on this faculty than any law faculty in America. RBG is an amazing presence. She is, um, she is so smart and so dedicated and so hardworking that it, you know, kind of sets an example to live up to for the rest of your career. And so that starts from the day you start clerking for her. A lot of people might think of her as a crusader in the law, and she was. But I think that that underestimates the degree to which she is a cautious crusader. Um, she's not turning things upside down right, in pursuit of a vision. She sees the whole picture and she sees the nuance and she takes her steps very, very thoughtfully. So I have definitely been influenced by the way that she thinks about legal problems and you know I often will try and think how might she approach this kind of question. I also just, um, you know, you spend a lot of time when you're clerking, you, um, you're writing for somebody else um, and you're drafting things which you know, she would always edit and sometimes she would rewrite from the ground up, but you're trying when, when you're writing to write something that will sound like what she would want to say. And so I have, I, you know, I think because you know, when, you, when, you, when you clerk for any justice, I think you acquire a little bit of an emulator in your brain that uh, you, know, you can write about an issue the way they would write about an issue and that also helps you to think about the issue the way that they would think about it. And so I also will sometimes think if she was writing this, what is the way that she would, how would she go about it? What would she say? I learned a tremendous amount from Justice Ginsburg, both in terms of how to be a lawyer and a writer, and also um, I think how to be a person, a mother um, in the law. She's a person of deep conviction and um, very committed to her values and to principles of justice. At the same time, she's extraordinarily fair, and so she required of us as clerks a um, great deal of balance in the way we presented issues. As a person, um, Justice Ginsburg um, is a model in so many ways. Um, she both has pursued her passions um, and has obviously had an incredibly successful career, but has not done that at, at the expense of her uh, commitment to both her own family and to her um, personal interests. She's very much a, a, a lawyer's lawyer. She cares a good deal about deciding the issues that are in front of her and not other issues. And she cares a lot about um, coherence of the doctrine. And she cares a lot about reaching a result that is um, that that brings to life the underlying purpose of the constitutional issue. So um, she does the, all of that together. She's a really, really, really good lawyer. Um, and so that's a really important thing. But at the same time, she's not a really good lawyer who doesn't care about, the, about what happens as a result of her jurisprudence. She cares about what happens as a result of the opinion she writes. Every Supreme Court justice is an important figure in American law, but there are only a subset of Supreme Court justices who are truly historical figures in American law, even apart from their service on the Supreme Court. And she is one of them, right? Had she never been on the Supreme Court, she would have been an important figure in the history of American law. And that makes her, I think, so much more than a Supreme Court justice, not that that wouldn't be enough. And to have someone of that stature 
uh, come here and visit us and talk to our students and our community, I think is a real privilege. It's a touching of history as it's happening.